Now to Pakistan, where they're counting the votes in an election which has seen deadly violence and allegations of corruption. Several people were killed in militant attacks as tens of millions cast their votes under heavy security. The government says mobile phone networks are gradually being restored after being shut down early in the day. Preliminary results are expected soon, but a clearer picture is not likely to emerge until Friday. Vote counting is underway across Pakistan following an election marred by militant attacks and allegations that the contest wasn't free or fair. Pakistan is in the midst of political and economic crisis and people heading to the polls hoped for change. Every single vote can change uh, the whole country scenario. You know, we are in very poor condition nowadays. Our country is facing so many problems. Well, to be very honest, I have uh, zero expectation from that whole electoral process. But uh, I guess uh, the things are not going so good. But we have to vote because, you know, you can say that the democracy, I mean, the worst democracy is better than what we can say that aristocracy or uh, bureaucracy, I guess, yeah. Frustration with the political system is one of the reasons that the turnout in this election was expected to be low. Another reason is that the country's most popular politician, former Prime Minister Imran Khan, is currently behind bars. He's been convicted of corruption and other charges and can't run for office. His supporters and members of his PTI party say his jailing was political and the election rigged against them. Safety concerns were also on voters' minds. Two explosions killed dozens in the country's southwestern province of Balochistan only hours before the vote began. Violent events have overshadowed the election. Hundreds of thousands of army, paramilitary and police were deployed to provide security on election day and the Interior Ministry suspended mobile phone services, citing terror concerns. It's proven to be a controversial move among Pakistanis and added to the already tense conditions on voting day. Straight to Pakistan, we can join uh, our correspondent Shamil Ashams in uh, Karachi. Uh, welcome, uh, Shamil. Um, can we start with the, this national suspension of mobile phone services? The government says this was done for security uh, of reasons. Um, just explain that to us and, and how valid those concerns uh, are. Uh, well, in some ways, they are pretty valid because we saw back-to-back uh, blasts in the western Balochistan province yesterday and uh, violence also marred the election electoral process uh, on the election day as well uh, on the 8th of February. So uh, there are concerns, security concerns that uh, we cannot ignore, the authorities cannot ignore. So in some ways they are valid, but uh, the PTI supporters, the party which is headed by former Prime Minister Imran Khan, who is in jail, who is imprisoned, uh, they say that the authorities shut down the mobile service and the internet access uh, so that they could not mobilize, uh, galvanize uh, their voters and bring them to the polling stations. So uh, you can look at both ways. In my right. Opinion. And just, just to be clear, the, the suggestion from the government is that the mobile phone services were being used to coordinate attacks. Yes, that's what they say. Okay. And it's not something new. This has happened in Pakistan before. Uh, and what is the, the, has been the, the military's uh, role in this election? It, it seems impossible to talk about a, a Pakistani election without uh, talking about the military. Uh, the military is the biggest stakeholder in Pakistan in terms of security, politically, economically. So, and military has ruled Pakistan collectively for what two decades, it still calls the shots. Uh, former Prime Minister Imran Khan had a falling out with, with the military. Uh, it was alleged that he was brought to power in 20, 2018 by the military generals, and then there was a falling out. Uh, it happened because Khan 
accused the military in Washington of uh, orchestrating his ouster in the no confidence vote, colluding with the opposition parties, then opposition parties, to remove him from power. Uh, that did not go well with the military. And also that uh, on uh, May 9th last year, Khan supporters took to the streets across the country. They targeted uh, military installations and military's residential areas. So the military is not really ready to ignore this. Uh, so that's why we always talk about the military in Pakistan, because it's a very powerful institution. And also that uh, what has happened in the past two years since Khan's removal from power, uh, Khan has directly confronted the military, and the right. military uh, is not ready to, to budge. And a word about the significance of these elections in terms of uh, Pakistan's uh, regional presence. Uh, Pakistan is facing serious security threats. Uh, the first threat is, a major threat, is from the tariq -e taliban Pakistan, which is quite active on the Afghan-Pakistan border. And the Afghan Taliban are quite close to the TTP, the Tariq -e Taliban Pakistan. Uh, the TTP has been attacking uh, uh, the soldiers, uh, military check posts, and civilians uh, in these areas in the northwestern Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province. Also, we see that Pakistan is having uh, some kind of tension with Iran uh, because. Uh, uh, last month, Iran uh, had a drone attack in Pakistan, inside Pakistan, in the Balochistan province, which borders Afghanistan and Iran. And, and in retaliation, uh, Pakistan attacked, uh, uh, launched an attack on Iranian soil. So this is a serious and very complicated issue. And it will be a big challenge for the next administration to deal with these security threats. And um, I see that what happened uh, yesterday in Balochistan, the two attacks, I see a military operation in Balochistan and the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province along the Afghanistan border to intensify right. in the coming days and weeks or months. And um, okay. that will determine Pakistan's geopolitical situation. Thank you for that, Shamil. Shamil Shams in Karachi.